In this video, we continue talking about how we can use Spark SQL using just straight SQL instead of going with the methods that are defined on data frames. So we got to the point where we had basically gotten our maximum temperatures using this select statement. But we really want to, I want to show you something that's more complex. My goal is to get to the result of the average daily temperatures there. So in addition to getting the max, I need to get the min. <clears throat> One thing I didn't do earlier was this it has a limit on it. it. Turns out that for memory reasons, I do need that. And I'm just going to limit them to a thousand real quick. Since I'm not plotting them yet, that doesn't matter. We could add in three more zeros later. So this gets my maximum temperatures. To get the minimum temperatures, I need to join this with a similar select that is going to only get the mins and we need to make sure we name that column tmin. And then we're joining these, we need to say how we are joining them in the uh, kind of standard data frame syntax, the programming syntax instead of the SQL syntax. We provided a sequence here, we say using, and then the columns that we want to join them on, which in this case is SID and date. Now you might ask at this point, well, how do we know this syntax? Most SQLs have a very similar syntax, but, but there are differences. Uh, and so it helps to be able to look up the details. Databricks has a, an SQL reference that you can go look at. Uh, we could go, there is a full SQL reference here. Most of the time we're just playing with select. And so this page will show you how you can do a variety of select uh, statements including joins and whatnot. So this website gives you a reference for what is valid to do in here. So this should pull together that data, but then I need to take things from that. So I need to do a select of something and then I'm pulling from this. If I select everything from this, I should get an SID, a date, a min, and a max. Now we can go ahead and run this to see that happen. Now, in order to get the goal that I really wanted was these daily temperatures where it's an average, okay? And actually this one is the average uh, with a conversion from one-tenths of Celsius to, uh, to Fahrenheit, and so we should probably go ahead and do that as well. So instead of selecting star, which gave me this table, okay, those four fields, I still want the SID and I want the date, but I don't want Tmax and Tmin separately. I want Tmax plus Tmin, and then divided by two as T average, that would just give me the it in this units of tenths of Celsius, which is why we have these really weird numbers that don't look like uh, healthy temperatures to be at. But we converted that earlier to Fahrenheit using an expression similar to that. And we should be able to run this and get a table that has three columns in it. It should have the station ID, a date, and an average temperature all nicely named that you can play with. Now, of course, one of the big differences between using the SQL uh, format and the programming format is the fact that if I then wanted to continue on and group this together with stations, I would nest this select inside of another select. Granted, because of the way Spark does this, I have options. I could take this variable that I've called pure SQL Let's see if that, yep, that did what we were hoping for. I could take this pure SQL, I could register it, register it as a table that then we could do another completely separate select on. And depending upon what you're doing, you might actually want to, alt, you might want to do that. So you kind of alternate between using SQL-like syntax with the Spark SQL command and doing things where you create intermediate variable names uh, and, and work with things in that fashion. You can mix and match however you want, but hopefully this gives you a good feeling, an idea of how you can use the straight out SQL 
to do reasonably complex queries inside of Spark.